How you doing there? I'm Jake with White House on the Hill, and today we're talking chicken breeds. I had a question for a few of my favorite channels, a few of our friends at other homesteads, as to what were their favorite chicken breeds. I'm hoping this will be a helpful video for you if you're looking to get started with chickens or to find the right breed for you. And today we're gonna get started. We're gonna head over to Al with Lumna Acres to talk about their favorite chicken breeds. Good morning, Jake, and all the modern steaders over at White House on the Hill. Thanks for asking us about what is our favorite chick on our homestead. Our favorite go-to chicken breed, Mr. Biggs, of course, is... Good morning, Mr. Biggs. They're not all Bard Rocks in here, but our number one breed is Bard Rock. The reason we like the Bard Rock chickens are they're a hardy, dual-purpose breed. They lay a little over 300 eggs a year for us. They're great in the conditions we have. They thrive really well on pasture, and they have a natural instinct for scratching and pecking. So on, when they're out on pasture, they're gonna <laughs> dig, scratch, find as many bugs as they can, eat the grass, and that just makes for a nice, deeper orange yolk. This time of the year, it's almost April here, in northern New Hampshire. We are still covered in snow. <laughs> so that being said, we are a very cold region. So in the winter time, the bod rocks do really well for us in our greenhouse with deep bedding. And we feed them hay and grain, and they still produce a lot of eggs and a lot of good tasty eggs for us. They're noisy. They're definitely a noisy breed, which is good. I found that it helps keep away the predators, which is a really good thing. One of the other breeds we have is right here. This is one of our Icelandic roosters playing king of the compost pile. We like the Icelandic chickens. As you can see, they're all different looking. That guy is. All the ones we have are different looking. They're just a beautiful bird. They're a rare breed, so it's fun to have them on the homestead just to add some different colors. The Icelandic chickens are really good at foraging. And then I'm gonna give you a sneak peek of some of the new breeds we're gonna be having for egg layers here at Lumna Acres. We're raising up 12 Easter egg layers and 12 Novergins. These are hardy breeds that are gonna do really well for us in the winter time. And they're gonna lay some beautiful eggs. The Bard Rocks have been the breed for us on our homestead that have been the most dependable in life. Wow, they're noisy this morning, sorry guys. But they've been the most dependable and reliable breed for us here on our homestead with the weather we have. Thanks, Jake, for asking us to be part of the chicken breed series that you're doing on your channel. And I can't wait to see what all the other homesteaders have to say. Thank you, Al, for that look at your flock. Next, we'll head to Chelsea with Little Mountain Ranch. He's out in Western Canada. Hi, everyone. My name is Chelsea, and I'm from Little Mountain Ranch in British Columbia, Canada. And today, I wanted to talk to you about my favorite breed of chicken, the Partridge Chanticleer. <laughs> so this girl here is actually one of my original Partridge Chanticleers and she is seven years old. One of the things that was most important to me when I was looking into what breed of chicken I really wanted to get into, I wanted a couple of different things. I wanted a heritage breed. I wanted a breed that I could potentially be a part of helping to save and the Partridge Chanticleer is actually on the critical list of endangered chicken breeds. But the most important thing of all was that I wanted a breed that was super duper cold hardy and was able to lay year round in the right circumstances. And the Partridge Chanticleer fits that bill perfectly. There you go, sweetie. There you go. The Partridge Chanticleer uh, started, I think, in about the 1930s in Alberta. It was originally called the Albertan. But because it was such a similar breed, so similar in fact, outside of the color, to the Chanticleer, the white Chanticleer, which had originated in the early part of the century in Quebec, Canada, um, the powers that be decided to put it under one umbrella of a Chanticleer chicken. So, so there's the white Chanticleer and the Partridge Chanticleer. And there's actually also a buff 
Chanticleer, but it hasn't been fine-tuned enough to be able to be put on sort of the legitimate chicken breed list. One of the things that I love about the Partridge Chanticleer is the fact that it has something that's called a cushion comb. Um, the cushion comb is a comb that is really flat to the top of the head, and they also don't have wattles, and wattles are sort of those pieces of skin that hang down below. The wattles on a Partridge Chanticleer are very, very close up to their skin, as well as the comb on the top of their head. And the benefits of that in a northern climate like we have is that they are not prone to frostbite in the wintertime. Whereas chickens that have a larger comb can get frostbite across the top of their um, comb, which I can imagine can would be very uncomfortable. So I, well, that was one of the things that really appealed to me about them. The other thing is, is that they're super great at free ranging. And they also seem to be quite savvy to predators. I haven't lost a lot of them to predators over the years. And I've lost none to cold. So for all those reasons, that is why I put the Partridge Chanticleer at the top of my list for favorite homestead breeds. Thanks Jake and Becky for inviting me to come over and talk about this and I hope you guys all have a fantastic day. Bye. Thank you Chelsea for that look at the Chanticleer. Next we're going to head out to northern Idaho to talk to Dan with the Grass-Fed Homestead. Hey guys, I'm Dan and this is the Grass-Fed Homestead and today I'm going to be telling you about my favorite chickens on our homestead. <coughs> we have a few different breeds of chickens on our homestead. We have Copper Morans, Lavender Orpingtons, we have a Red Star, Ian Chamanis, Rhode Island Reds, Carolina Blue Sex Link, and some Olive Eggers. But of all the breeds of chickens we have, there is one breed that really, really stands out to me and has become my favorite breed, and that is the Swedish Flower Chickens. The Swedish Flower Hens are a land race breed, which means that they're not bred to conform to any certain standards, such as certain colorings or certain sizes, but they're just really bred for their hardiness. They have evolved naturally from Sweden, which is obviously a cold environment during the winter, so they're a really cold, hardy chicken. They're also considered a rare breed of chicken. Until the last couple decades, they were nearly extinct as an entire breed. We are in a northern climate here in North Idaho, so cold hardiness was one really big factor for us getting that breed of chicken, but also the rareness too was really intriguing to us. We wanted to be part of reviving a rare species. Given their cold hardiness, I was really expecting our rooster to have a smaller comb, but he did have a pretty good comb and it succumbed to frostbite over the winter. As you can see, the majority of the frostbitten portion of his comb has fallen off and only a small bit remains in the back. Prior to his comb loss, I think he was the most stunning looking rooster that I've ever seen. Swedish flower hens lay a large beige egg. When I say large, I don't mean it's the size of a duck egg or a goose egg or anything like that, but it's a full-size chicken egg, and they have been absolutely fantastic layers for us. Their production is probably the best daily production that we've seen consistently out of our birds since we've been raising chickens. So Swedish flower chickens, cold hardy, rare breed, great egg production, good egg size, lots of variety in appearance, that's what makes them my favorite chicken on our homestead. What's your favorite chicken, little buddy? My favorite chicken? I don't think I have one since they poop everywhere. I don't have one. Favorite. Because they poop everywhere? Yeah. I don't like to poop. Thank you to Dan for talking about the Swedish flower chicken. Next, we're going to head down to Alabama to talk to Jason with Cog Hill Farm. What's up, guys? It is Jason over here at Cog Hill Farm. Thanks, Jake, for asking us to be a part of this. And when he asked me what was our favorite chicken breed, oh my gracious, we have so many. It was really, really hard to, to come up with one single one. But honestly, we favor the old heritage breed chickens. Uh, if you go to the Livestock Conservancy website, you could get a, a list of them all there. But, you know, one right now that we're getting to be really, really partial to are the, uh, the Favorals, or as the French say, Favorals. Um, but down here in the southeast, we say Favorals. So, um, yeah, it's an it's a old breed that is on the threatened list. Um, the old heritage breed chicken, they lay they lay a pretty good many eggs. They're not going to lay like a hybrid or maybe not even like a Rhode Island Red, but you're probably going to get around 180 to 200 eggs a year from them. A light brown egg, almost porcelain-like. But the really cool thing about them is, is the way they look. Uh, 
kind of a remind you of an air condo because of the tusks but they got feather feet but what's really cool about this chicken is is not only is it beautiful not only does it lay you know a good many eggs it is a dual purpose breed if you wanted it to be but they're super friendly they're so docile almost to the point it to the point that some people say kind of be careful with them because they get picked on so bad by the other chickens because they're just so laid back even the roosters the roosters are just so mellow and and just really 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 friendly and that is one reason that we've become really partial to this breed but we do love we love we love so many heritage breeds but this is this is the one that we're really becoming really 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 partial to just just excellent temperament and again they lay a good many eggs but they are a french breed they come from france and they get their name from the town of favorables that's where the name originated from but they're starting to gain a little bit of popularity and i'm glad of that hopefully they'll get off that threatened list and more and more people will start raising them but uh yeah thanks jake for asking us to be a part of this you guys y'all check out this breed there you can find them now they used to be kind of hard to find but all your big hatcheries are carrying them now so check them out excellent excellent chicken very friendly that's what we like about them really really docile super friendly if you wanted that pet chicken or one that comes up to you and and likes to be held and that kind of thing that might be the chicken for you thanks again guys we'll see y'all later y'all be good well thank you to jason and coghill farm for talking about the favorils and it's our turn what are we going to pick for our favorite chicken breed well we've got a number of breeds that lay some really cool colored eggs we've got our wyandots our blue laced red wyandots our well summers our black copper morans and we have our americanas that lay our green and our blue colored eggs so i thought we'd do a little experiment i don't think i can juggle five all right well let's see which one comes out on top which one survives all right well safe to say our americana egg came out unscathed and that is our favorite chicken breed let's talk about the americana so the Americana chicken stands alone on our farm as a favorite. While we have the Black Copper Morans, the Lavender Orpingtons, the Blue Lace Red Wyandots, the Bard Rocks, and the Australorps, this chicken stands alone to us as our favorite to raise. One, we love them for their unique look. We really love their blue, green colored eggs and their temperament, that they are the friendliest of all the chicken breeds that we own. A quick backstory on the Americana. They originated from the Aracana that was from Chile, created in the US in the 70s. And while the Aracana chicken doesn't have a tail, the Americana has a tail, also has the muffs, and I believe that's a pea comb. They don't lay quite as often as our good egg layers like the Bard Rock, the Australorp, the Buff Orpington, but they are really picking up speed as far as the amount of eggs we get from them on our farm, and we just love them to death. So thank you to all of those homesteads, all of those YouTube channels for helping us out in our chicken breed discussion. I hope you go check them out. Of course, we had Al with Lumna Acres, Chelsea with Little Mountain Ranch, Dan with Grasshead Homestead, and Jason with Coghill Farm. Really appreciate your help. And just one final note, if you are wondering which breed to start with, what are you trying to accomplish with your chicken? Are you looking for a certain type of egg color, the amount of eggs, meat, a dual purpose breed, all those things to consider. Do some research, find out some information for what you need to accomplish what you want to accomplish with your chickens. We wish you luck on your chicken raising journey and we'll see you next time from White House on the Hill. Welcome to try.